Hello everyone. It is Sunday. Happy Sunday night. I am here with Tiffany and we are here to share our week one check-in and just sort of um, collectively chat about everything that we did in our first week of 30 days of DDR. Thank you so much for everything that you contributed and for participating. Um, Tiffany, would you like to introduce yourself briefly? Yes. Hey everyone, I'm Tiffany. I'm a special ed teacher in North Carolina and I've worked 11 years helping families and students. Thank you so much for sharing your evening with us and hopefully tonight you will feel encouraged and inspired to continue for the next three weeks as well. Tonight on TAP, first we're going to talk about the week one stats and just give a brief summary of all the observations and feedback that you've shared with us. Um, it's, it's really nice to see that data uh, start to pile up because I think then you'll see just all that everyone is experiencing and that will help you again want to continue for the rest of the study but also start to really um, pinpoint any changes and things that you might be feeling or experiencing either you or for your kiddos then we're going to go back through the wellness pipelines and we're going to talk about these things every single week so that you can compare and take notice of any changes in all of those areas and how you can use your essential oils to help support you through making those small sustainable changes. And then I'm going to pass the torch over to Tiff for her self-care tips. And then we're going to talk about a few reminders for week two and then just have an open Q&A. So we have our phones here on standby where we can see the chat. So if anyone wants to um, ask questions, hello, Robin, thank you for joining us. If anyone has questions um, for us, hello, Beth, hello, everybody. So glad to see you. Hi, Mary. Oh, I'm so glad you guys are here. This is fantastic. So if anyone has any questions at any time along the way, uh, Tiffany and I will be able to take turns. So while Tiffany's talking, I'll be able to ask any of the questions I can um, jump in and interrupt her and then she can do the same for me. Hello, Colleen. Hello, Dee. I'm so glad you guys are joining us. And then we'll have that open Q&A opportunity for you. So if you have not asked a question, uh, but you want to ask something to Tiffany that she could answer, then this is a great opportunity to do that. So first and foremost, we want to dig into the week one observation statistics and the feedback summary. So of course, this data came directly from you all. So this is really exciting and interesting because as you can see, this goes from the most frequently uh, shared observations to the most infrequently shared. And it's really, really nice to see all these numbers. So obviously, as we're seeing here on the screen, better sleep and feeling rested and restored was at the absolute top of the list, which is fantastic fantastic because sleep is foundational to all other areas in our wellness. Hello, Molly. Great to see you. Thank you guys for joining us. And sleep and feeling restored, waking up, feeling rested, not only helps our children, but it also helps us be their advocate for the day and come to the day collected and calm and assertive and even keeled. And it's really, really important for you to be getting restful sleep. That is a number one form of self-care of all truly. Um, also, the fact that ourselves, that either we felt cooperative or that our children were feeling cooperative and that you observe those cooperations in them is huge because if your children are cooperating, that's helping you feel less frustrated or angry or exhausted emotionally or keyed up or anxious. So that's really, really important. The other thing is feeling active and feeling more energy because if we're feeling lethargic and slow and uh, you know just feeling really down, then it affects our emotional state. It affects our immune system. Beth is saying she had such better sleep, the duration and the quality. So these are huge observations. So please keep these coming. Um, also detailed dreams clearing out cluttered emotions, feeling more grounded, um, using new words. This is huge. This is a really, really pivotal opportunity for us to really see what this blend is doing for us and for our children and for those of you that are participating. So also better behavior, increased focus, feeling more calm, less meltdowns than normal, more expressive language, improved memory, um, feeling like your body was detoxing, uh, feeling that you or your children were getting along better with others, seeing some cognitive improvements, increased confidence and security, um, showing signs of more affection and feeling loving, 
uh, and having easier transitions from activity to activity. Um, Colleen says she has tears in her eyes reading the comments because it was so amazing. And this is just seven days, you guys. Like we've only been doing this together for seven days. Imagine the cumulative effects you will be experiencing in your home, in your life, personally, in 30 days, in 60 days, in 90 days, in a year, a year from now, how much different your daily routine will feel, how much different your home life will feel, the communication with your family members, within your relationships. It is so impactful and I am so grateful for all of you that shared with us as much detail as you did in the way that you were checking in each day. So please continue doing that. That is a really, really important part of this experience. So whether you want to post once a day, whether you want to post three times a day, whether you want to post once a week, there's absolutely no requirement other than posting that one check-in per week at minimum in order to stay active through the study because we need this data to see and track these trends. That's the purpose of this exercise, to see how this oil blend can help us with all of these things and then more. Um, Robin is saying it's unbelievable and she's feeling so promised about this. Um, and Colleen's also mentioning, which is so, so important and crucial too, because we're doing this exercise during the summer months. So this is going to be a very important tool for you in your toolkit for the transition back to the school year. So even if your kids are in camp, even if your kids are in another structured program, it's not the same as their actual full-time elementary school or middle school, high school experience. So I just want you to be really grateful for, um, for everyone else, you know, contributing and just, I love seeing you comment on each other's check-ins and be supportive and be helpful and add your own insights. That is so huge. And that's the purpose of this collective experience together that we're not only just doing this, we're not just swiping oils on us in a box. You know, we're sharing this experience collectively in this private environment where we can feel safe and where we can feel supported and comfortable. And so uh, this is just fantastic. I'm, I'm really excited about this and I'm going to share this slide in our group so you can have this if you wanna share it in your personal groups, if you wanna share it with your child's educator, if you wanna share this with any of your children's advocates or anyone of that nature to share with them, um, please feel free to do that. So now we're gonna shift into our wellness pipeline check-in and I hope you found this helpful last week. So grab your pen and paper, grab your journal. I'm gonna do this with you because I'm participating just like you all are as well and sharing my check-ins and sharing everything. Hello, Jessica, so glad to have you. So we're gonna go through these just like we do every week um, and on a scale from one to 10, 10 being the best, we're gonna rate all these different areas of our wellness. And of course, if you need help with utilizing your essential oils to help support you through each of these, reach out to me or whoever brought you to doTERRA. They are your number one source of support and education. So they can set up a uh, wellness consult with you and go through these and help you kind of craft that 90 day plan. But I'm happy to do that as well. So reach out to me if you need any of those um, supports as well. But so the first one is sleep. So on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the best, most restorative sleep that you're waking up feeling renewed, that you uh, felt like you were either dreaming or you felt restored when you woke up, that you felt rested. On a scale of one to 10, write down your score in your journal. The next one is your nutrition. So on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the best and um, one being the lowest that, uh, so, you know, tell us or tell yourself really in your journal, um, on a scale of one to 10, how is your nutrition? So are you making time for three meals a day? Are you making time to plan out your meals? Are you including fresh fruits and vegetables and whole grains into your nutrition plan? Uh, are you making any modifications, perhaps uh, limiting gluten and dairy and processed sugar, um, food dye, some of these things that can exacerbate our children's behavior issues and challenges. So on a scale of one to 10, rate your nutrition for this past week. The next is your mood and emotional balance. So on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the best, most even keel that you feel really good and even and balanced and um, assertive and you know able to advocate for your children if they need something from you or from the care providers, from their educational institution, just overall in your home, at work, um, with your children, your interactions and communication between them on a scale of one to 10, rate your mood and emotional balance for just this week.
All right, next is your productivity and focus. So on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the best, most efficient, um, you're feeling productive, you're practicing the amazing rule of three, and either before bed or in the morning, jotting down those three most important activities that you accomplish, tasks that you need to get done for your day to go smoothly. Um, before you do anything else, you are shutting down the, the Instagram or the Facebook or the social media, and you are turning off your notifications and truly focusing on accomplishing those things that you need to accomplish, maybe turning off the TV more frequently, uh, or maybe not even turning it on, and really digging into those things that you want to do to be productive in your day, whether that means self-care, whether that means you're studying, whether that means your work, or uh, whatever things that you need to get accomplished for your day. Rate yourself with your productivity and your focus for this week alone. The next is exercise on a scale of one to 10. Are you moving your body and getting sweaty, getting your heart rate up at least three times a week in an intentional way? Not just bringing in the groceries or doing the laundry or running up and down the stairs chasing after the kids, but truly intentional. Taking a walk with your family after dinner, taking a walk in the morning, riding bikes, uh, practicing yoga, stretching, um, swimming, any of those things that bring you joy, that get your heart rate going, that help boost your endorphins, um, an exercise video from YouTube or whatever, going to the gym if you have one. On a scale of one to 10, rate your exercise. The next is your digestion. So on a scale of one to 10, so are you feeling bloated or gassy or having problems having at least one comfortable bowel movement per day? Or are you finding that your digestion is pretty good and comfortable? You're not feeling uncomfortable after meals. Um, you're not having any discomfort when it comes to the bathroom time. On a scale of one to 10, rate your digestion. The next is water intake. Obviously water intake and digestion are gonna go hand in hand as well. The more hydrated we are, the more our bowels can move comfortably. We can eliminate those toxins in our environment and in our body that the DDR blend is helping us to eliminate. Um, so on a scale of one to 10, are you drinking enough water with your lemon essential oil to help your body naturally detox? Uh, or lime or grapefruit or peppermint or anything that you like to drink in your water? Um, are you taking time to be intentional about your water intake and hydration? This helps your body on so many levels. Staying hydrated also helps you have more restful sleep. It helps your skin. It helps all of your filter organs feel more comfortable and it helps your children as well in many, many areas. So on a scale of one to 10, rate your water intake for this week. And last but not least, and Tiffany and I's favorite topic, self-care practices. So on a scale of one to 10, rate your self-care. Did you take time at least three to five times this week, even if it's just five minutes to take a breath and do some meditation or close your eyes and rest, read a book, have a cup of tea by yourself, go do something for yourself, not for anyone else, um, just that brings you joy. Maybe you like to knit or crochet or, um, hey, Amy, glad you could join us. Um, anything that brings you joy or happiness, reading a magazine, reading a book, crafting, doing any of those things, taking a magnesium bath, um, painting your nails, any of those fun things. So on a scale of one to 10, how did you do with your self-care practices? And I want you to be thinking of these. I want you to have these written down somewhere, whether it's in your tracking sheet or in your journal that you can compare week to week because at the end of the 30 days, I want you to, if you feel comfortable and if you don't feel comfortable sharing them, you can share them with me privately and I won't share your name or anything, but I would love to get some data on how these are going for you week to week from week one into week two, how you felt. And last week was a baseline because that was before we started, right? So. Last week was the baseline and now we've had one week of this blend under our belt where we're being more mindful of our habits and our surroundings and our communication style and the, the uh, small sustainable change of just simply incorporating this blend into our daily routine three times a day for seven days only. So at the end of the 30 days and any time therein that you feel like sharing with the group or with me, please do so. I would love to see those. You don't have to share with me your numbers specifically if you don't want to, but certainly maybe letting me know if you're seeing some definite improvement, that would be great. And also don't forget to be using your essential oils to help you and support with each of these elements. The next thing is I'm going to pass the torch to Tiffany and she is going to share her top tips for holding space for self-care in your routine. So Tiffany, I am going to take it away. I'm going to let you take it away, my dear. Okay, thank you for that lead-in. I do want to mention with the um, 
the points that you were saying with the numbers that were at, if there's any changes in your routine, like I'm on vacation this week, so my numbers look very different than they should because I'm not eating as healthy as I am. So I marked that down to remind me not to be frustrated with myself if they're not as high as they were in my baseline. Um, also with behavior, anytime there is a change and you're putting um, restrictions on things or putting it on what we call extinction, the behavior may get worse before it gets better. So say you were taking away a pacifier from a kid, it, they're going to scream and shout a lot more until they realize that they're not going to get that behavior, get that uh, reinforcer anymore. So some of us may be seeing some negative behaviors because we are detoxing all of those emotions, um, but it always gets worse before it gets better with those types of things. So be mindful of that when you're watching um, those numbers um, and not be hard on yourself. With this, we see that self-care is one of the tips in the pipeline. We hear a lot about self-care. There's a lot of great tips in the um, module for this week that talks about some quick things you can do or bubble baths or different things like that. What I'm going to talk about is laying the foundation so that the self-care really gives you the most bang for your buck. So there's certain tips um, that I did a lot of research on trying to find what's going to help the families of people um, that the families are the caretakers or the the people themselves that need the caretaking. So one of them is to get moving. Um, it doesn't matter how you move, it's just that you move. So you could have a dance party in your living room, you could play the, the soundtrack to trolls over and over again, um, go for a walk, play tag with your kid, go to the park, or do your favorite exercise, any of those. There's a really good website called Go Noodle um, that has lots of fun dance music for kids and also some meditation and calm down as well and it's free I used it in my classroom because I knew it was things that weren't going to have uh, language or information that was inappropriate for my students to hear and it's a great brain break they're all about three to five minutes so that was the way we were able to incorporate and getting moving in our classroom next you have to feed your body well so it is very easy to eat unhealthy one of the first things that I've been working on this summer is feeding my body better. So I'm drinking lots of water. I have a big old bubble jug that goes with me everywhere. I'm eating better quality food. Uh, and it's a great, a great way to do this as a busy woman or mama um, is to meal prep beforehand. So you can take maybe a Sunday when they're taking some quiet time that we'll talk about later and you can meal prep up for the week snacks or easy to go things that you can grab to eat. They could be almonds, they could be cheese, whatever is healthy for your family and their diets. But having them ready to go makes preparing lunches or snacks that you need for the car or at the park much easier. Um, I personally use uh, doTERRA's Lifelong Vitality Pack. I've used it for five months to support my body and how I'm making sure I have enough of the basics of everything I need. So any type of um, thing that you use to help provide the basic vitamins and minerals is gonna help impact um, you and your kids with their behavior, their sleep, their mood, your energy levels, and all of that as well. I also use, um, I found this out from Hillary, the Natural Vitalities Calm, the magnesium supplement. And this is a, uh, these two foundations have improved my health where it's helping with my anxiousness, which often leads for me personally having a brain fog. My third tip has to do with accountability. You don't want to isolate yourself. So when we're ta time blocking, like Hillary gave us in the time blocking video, we need to make time for friends and family as well. You can join a book club, a mommy group, um, groups with families dealing with similar or very same situations, having a family movie night, going to Bible study, um, just hanging out with friends or running to go get coffee. Again, like we said last time, we Going to the grocery store does not equate for fun. So make this a more fun time for you. The fourth tip is to take care of yourself. So oftentimes the parents I work with really closely um, are great with health, working with healthcare providers for their children. And they know every single doctor's appointment and they, they go there all the time, but they forget to do the same for themselves. So you have to make yourself a priority in order to help other people. So this is a checkup, your eye exams, make sure to put them on the calendar, make that date with yourself and don't, um, don't break it. 
because we've all heard the quote of you can't pour from an empty cup. So if you're sick and you're run down, you're definitely going to not be able to help those that need help in your family or yourself as much. One of the other ways that I help with my immunity along with the lifelong vitality back is I take the um, doTERRA's On Guard Plus each day, especially during the school year. So I just take one of the little gel cups in the morning when I'm taking my other vitamins just to keep my immune system boosted. So you can take a couple of these and puncture them and put them in a roller ball. So if you do go to the doctor's office or it's for school for your kids, you can roll that on their spine and their feet as well um, to help them. And then I keep other things. So when I'm feeling sick on the go, I digest, with, digest them with me all the time. And I just roll that on when I'm not feeling well. Or I keep frankincense and copaiba. I'll put them under my tongue, um, frankincense on the roof of my mouth or peppermint on my forehead whenever I'm feeling that head tension so that I can better help my students. Because if I'm sitting there not feeling well and having a headache, I'm not able to help them in the class and with their needs. The fifth one is sleep. And I was so glad to see that so many of us were getting much more sleep this week. So that's awesome. Um, it is essential for your body and your brain to get sleep. There are some of us that need a lot of sleep and there are some that can go on a, a little bit less, but you need to find out what's best for your body. Um, but for most adults, it's about six to eight hours. I feel like me, it may be closer to eight hours. I personally like to use the Serenity um, blend with the balance blend and wild orange in my diffuser at night to help me get that restful relaxing sleep i also use um, for my anxiety and uh, my depression to support those symptoms i use a combination of our emotional aromatherapy blend so i use forgive i put it either on the lower part of my spine or above my spleen which is where we hold our anger i use peace on the back of my neck and my wrists and I use console um, over my heart. And those three, taking them, using that combination before bed with the sleep blend that I create helps my brain to be able to relax more so that I get a restful sleep and I'm not waking up with those anxious feelings throughout the night, which leads to me waking up better and not needing to rely on all, as many of those supports during the day because I've given myself that strong foundation. When I am feeling extremely especially anxious, I do use the Serenity Soft Gel. Um, I may take one before bed, about a half an hour or so. And I love it because it helps me to relax, but it, I don't feel groggy the next day because I'm very sensitive to a lot of um, supplements and medications out there, but I'm able to use this just fine. And my fun fact tip is you can use one of these when you're having anxious feelings um, throughout the day. I take one um, when I'm starting to feel that way or I'm starting to get into those repetitive thoughts that are very negative thoughts that can re definitely run me down, I take one of those and then I take time to um, meditate or to pray. And then when I get out of that, those feelings are gone and I'm able to go about my day. Uh, so six is do something for yourself. This is one of the ones that was hardest for me as an adult to realize that it was okay to do because you feel like you're selfish, but it's not. You definitely need to do something for yourself. So you can read, you could listen to an audiobook. For busy families, audiobooks have been my best friend during the school year. That's how I'm able to read throughout the year. I can listen to it on the car ride, listen to it during those um, times in the workday that I'm not teaching. So that is one of my favorite things. I also like a good podcast. I will listen to that when I'm getting ready in the morning if I'm not listening to the news. You can journal, you can meditate, you can do a Bible study, you can put you can complete some personal development. Uh, watch a show that you can't watch while the kids are awake is another great one. Take some time for you. Block it out. Again, set it as a date and don't let yourself break it. It could be 15 to 30 minutes each day. Um, there's a podcast that is linked on this screen that is three and 30 podcasts. And I watched a Insta story, I had to think of the name, the Insta story where she was talking about quiet time. So she sets a timer for her kids and they can pick one toy or like a box of toys, like say Legos or something. And they go to a place they pick. So if they share bedrooms, they can pick another place and they go and they have to go be quiet and quiet play for that amount of time. So you would want to start small, maybe like five minutes and then work it up. And then during this time, instead of going and getting those chores done, 
you could also make this your quiet time. Um, if, if you're doing it when after bed, when, when all the kids are in bed, another great one that I like is a good bath. Um, it's hard for me to take baths because my dog will want to jump in when he smells the doTERRA lavender in there. Um, but it's definitely a great time. Like you can set a bath, you can put on your favorite music, you can read a book, whatever is good for you. Number seven tip is to express your out, aka get your feelings out. So this is the one that I work the most with with my students throughout the year. I teach um, students that are in an inclusion class and in a resource setting. And in the resource setting specifically, we have to work on this a lot. So students have many feelings, especially in middle school, about eighth grade. I teach mostly boys, so we work on what our, identifying what our feelings are, working on strategies to get past those feelings. So for you, um, get your feelings out. In order for you to deal with anything, like a lot of people when I was looking in the comments were saying that they're having like this detox of emotion, they're feeling overly emotional. So you're feeling those for a reason. Yes, this is helping to get that out. The, all of these are releasing emotion, um, oils for emotion. So journal about it. I love to, I'm not good at journaling, but I'm really good at free writing. So I'll just sit there and write what comes to my head at first. And then you're going through that train of consciousness and your brain will slowly get you to the place that is, oh, I'm feeling this way because of this. This is where that anxiousness is really coming from. Um, you could blog. You could write poetry, um, anything that's going to free your thoughts and your feelings so you can better process them, um, not obsessively think about them, and even to start moving past them. The important thing is allowing yourself to actually feel the feelings. Many caretakers that I know put on that armor all the time, and they don't give themselves that time to to take off the armor, to feel the feelings. It's okay to feel the feelings. You're, you were meant to, you were given them for a reason. So you need to give yourself that safe space to get through them so that you do have more patience throughout the day because you're not feeling tight and wound up and on edge. The eighth one is enjoy the spaces in between. So in our time and age, our, our, in this day and age, it is very easy at a stoplight, when we're waiting in line at the grocery store, while we're waiting for our kids at the bus stop to play on our phones and to stay busy, to answer those emails, to um, see what's happening on social media. But at these times in between, we can easily make into some mini me times. So this touches on um, what Hillary was saying in her amazing time blocking video about not multitasking. So if you're at a stoplight, don't use it to check your messages, your email, your Facebook. I actually put um, my phone has the do not disturb while driving feature, so I can't get into my phone even if I'm at a stoplight. And that, that really helps me have that self-control to not get on it. It's easy to do, but it only causes me to get anxious or stressed about what am I going to reply to that email? What are, um, when am I going to be able to stop to reply to that message when I really just need to focus on what's happening right then. So at those stoplights, you can practice that mindfulness and take some deep breaths. That time at the stoplight can become a little med meditation with your eyes open zone. Um, you can also keep some of your touch rollers near you in case um, you need to bring some more peace like you're stuck in traffic uh, to help you with those meditations. Number nine is say yes to help and say no to extra burden. So I think every mom is a super mom. But that doesn't mean you have to do it all yourself. You need to learn to delegate tasks, divide and conquer. So one of the mamas that works at my school has all of her family hands on deck. Each week, her mom sends out a schedule of all of the grandkids' schedules, the parents' schedules, who's picking up where, so who's picking up what child, when, and then dropping off what other activities. These are nonstop, always on the go people. And by delegating it throughout the family, everyone's at peace on that the kids are gonna be safe and get to where they're going, but nobody has to do it all. Um, so this is a great one. Um, they even do like who's picking up the youngest daughter for school, which family member can attend practice for the other daughter. So they're, they're working very smoothly, even though they don't understand my new favorite thing of no. 
Um, so work together as a business. That's what my family always did. And each person has assigned tasks for their strength. And when someone is out sick, everyone divides up those tasks um, so that the business runs smoothly. But remember, you're not meant to do this alone. And finally, is the only thing that helps me get through the school year, is establishing a routine and schedule. So it may not sound like self-care, but your mind craves routines, and so do all of those in your family. Time blocking a schedule and having routines help you and your family, especially those with anxiety, ADD, ADHD, and those on the autism spectrum, feel safe and secure. Without these, there can be more breakdowns because of feeling anxious, not knowing what's gonna come next. Having a routine of where, places, where things go helps with those moments when you just need to grab and go, as well as lessening the moments of feeling forgetful or living in a brain fog. A clear schedule can also lead um, to less breakdowns. Um, like if they know a, a fun task for me, say it's laundry. If I know that I set the timer and I have 10 minutes to get the laundry done and then I can do something more fun that I want to do, I'm more willing to get it done. If I don't set these tasks and timers even for myself as an adult, I'm less, um, I will be more likely to put them off and put them off till I have laundry until the next week I do laundry. Um, so I, I do the same thing with paperwork. I give myself a 10 minute break. I, um, I often say for my students, if you can give them a picture schedule, you can take pictures of them doing the various tasks that you want them to do, like washing their hands, brushing their teeth, and you can put them up in those areas. You can also do picture schedules with the Velcro attached to it so they can move it when they're done. If they don't like their own picture taken, um, you can do it with their icons out there. So you can use like emojis or different icons and you can move those with the, put it with the time and say if it was done or not, or you can move a check mark next to it. All of those different things will definitely help. You can do that even with this, like the taking your DDR prime or your vitamins each day. So I hope that those self-care tips help you to lay the foundation so you use the other fun tips that Hillary posted. And um, if you have any questions or any different ways that you use self-care, definitely leave those in the comments so that we can all share with each other. Because I'm, I'm great at giving teacher tips but I'm not great yet at mama tips. So what tips do you guys have for self-care as a mom? Tiffany, thank you so much. This was so insightful and so very helpful for us because that's what we wanna do in this group, not only facilitate the healing and having these observations, but what else? What else can we, be, can we be doing in between? So after we do our swipes in the morning and afternoon and night, what is what else can we be doing to enrich each other during this experience. And these self-care routines that we can establish now in the summer months can help carry us into the school year and making that transition so much more fluid. And so I wanted to share some of the comments that, um, that everyone has shared so far in, in our live feed right now. So Robin is saying when you were talking about feeding your body and when we talk about the lifelong vitality pack, that is the absolute foundational pillar of your wellness, sleep and your nutrition. Those two are so very important. And the LLV is the fertile soil that everything else we're doing with oils is there so that everything else can blossom and flourish and take root. So if you don't have a strong foundation, the rest of the house crumbles, right? But if your foundation is super solid and your lifelong vitality trio is your absolute foundation for filling in the gaps nutritionally, if you're eating on the go, if you're not able to make time for those healthy meals, the lifelong vitality vitamins are absolutely so, so super important. And Robin was mentioning that just even if you're not prepping all of your meals completely in their entirety, prepping and chopping your fruits and veggies, maybe boiling some proteins or um, hard boiling some eggs, or just having those things at the ready and ready to go and already assembled so that you can just put them all together. You know, maybe if you have everything chopped and containerized, let's say you're making an egg white omelet in the morning, all your veggies are chopped and you have everything. You can just put it in the skillet Bake, you know, cook it up for five minutes and boom, you have a really healthy protein rich meal. Um, Colleen was also saying that giving the children the option is really, really helpful for giving them a sense of control when it talk when we were talking about um, giving them that three and 30 and giving them the opportunity to have that quiet time so that you can also practice those self care, uh, you know, avenues and elements that you want to incorporate um, and then Robin was also mentioning that our focus increases and we're able to give more to ourselves and give more to others when we 
treat ourselves and not necessarily in a way that makes you feel guilty because you definitely don't ever want to assign guilt to your self-care practices, but it's just like brushing your teeth and taking a shower and going to the doctor and taking your vitamins. It's the same and you shouldn't feel guilty about doing that. And I don't know where along the way in society that we started feeling like we had to be a martyr and do everything for everybody else and then leave ourselves last. It's like the burnt toast kind of ideology. Like we deserve something great as well, just like everyone else. We don't, we don't need to be eating the burnt toast all the time. And then um, Robin also said she was listening to a podcast about micro mindfulness and exactly what you were talking about, Tiffany. And so taking those moments to enjoy the space between helps you feel less frantic. It helps you feel less anxious because your time doesn't feel so harried that you feel like, okay, during this time that I'm doing this task, I can just settle into those feelings and start thinking about whatever I want to think about and free associating or just relaxing instead of just constantly feeling a sense of 100 miles an hour. And then Colleen said that she loves to roll oils on her in the car and help make sure that she is at peace. Um, Robin said that peace is one of her favorite oils for when she's stuck in horrendous Miami traffic and she always has a peace roller on her. And um, Colleen says that children crave that consistency and routine. Tiffany, when you were talking about establishing that schedule and routine and um, routines really are the key to all of us, not only for us as the advocate for our children, but also for them because then they know it's expected. Not necessarily, okay, at 7.02, you'll do this. And at 7.10, you'll do this. It's more of the flow of the day that first we do this and then we do this and then this follows. It's not necessarily exactly the time because that is going to set you up for failure. Because if something happens that throws off that specific schedule, then that can throw off the vibration, that can throw off the communication or the flow. And so instead of being so focused on the schedule, more about the routine and the flow and the order of things, which helps bring that comfort to the kiddos. And um, Robin is also saying something important to keep in mind is self-care and knowing yourself. So knowing what things trigger you to just feel relaxed and at ease and calm, knowing what energizes you, knowing what you find fun, um, and something that works for me or for you or for Robin or for Colleen might not work for someone else. You know, someone, I love doing crafts. I love doing DIYs and testing out different combinations of things. And some people like to knit or crochet and that's relaxing to them. And maybe doing DIYs stresses them out. So um, I definitely like that, Robin. I really appreciate that contribution because that's a really important one. And maybe take five minutes and uh, if you have, you know, time while you're waiting for a, an appointment for your child or for something going on where you have a few minutes, start jotting down a list of the things that you love to do or a list of the things that you want to use as self-care for the next week. So if you want to take a walk after dinner, put that on your list and then add it to your amazing rule of three. So when you accomplish it, you feel amazing that you've gotten something done that really is important to you. Um, and I encourage you to include one self-care item in your amazing rule of three per day. So if you have to do three things, one of those three should be something for self-care, whether it's a workout in the morning or a smoothie or a glass of uh, hot tea or you know a magnesium drink or whatever, something taking your vitamins, those are definite acts of self-care. So keep in mind that and maybe just make a list so that you can work from that list if you have five or 10 minutes. What can you do in five minutes? You can take your vitamins. You can make yourself a hot tea or a drink that you like to have. Uh, and then um, Colleen saying that if you're lucky to have a fridge at work, bring all your lunches and snacks with you. Um, she has a fridge in her classroom and this way she's not spending a lot of money on ordering her lunch or picking it up and then making her downtime even smaller. Um, and you do make better choices when you can plan those things and be in charge of the ingredients. Um, and that's another important one as well. And I also mentioned that to people that work in an office or environment where they're away from home, have a set of your vitamins either in your briefcase or your purse or at in your locker if you have a locker at work or um, somewhere that you are going to be there most of your day. Don't worry about lugging and containerizing and compartmentalizing your vitamins. If you are at your office for eight hours a day, have an entire set or have a box of them, you know, with, uh, with however much supply that you have that you can do that for. Or when you get your new supply of vitamins, split each of the bottles in half and keep half at home and half at work, half at home, half at wherever you spend most of your time so that you're not worrying about, oh, I forgot my vitamins. Oh, I forgot my DDR prime blend today because I left it out, right? You know, because I forgot it or I didn't have it with me. So that's another really important one. 
Um, and then, yes, so I think it's just really important that we keep these tips in mind. Now, just a reminder, you wanna keep posting your week two check-ins in the pin post with as much detail as you possibly can. So if you felt a certain way, please share with us as much detail as possible and not just, oh, I woke up feeling rested or I, you know, I had a meltdown today. Share in as, in as much detail as you can because that's really gonna help us help you so much more. That's gonna help us measure these things, take a look at what's going on and it's gonna really help us help you so tremendously. So the last, now that we're done, I just wanted to open it up to questions. If anyone has any questions while Tiffany is on here, we'll give you another minute. Otherwise, um, you will have the opportunity to just comment those things if you want to um, when you are watching the replay. So keep that in mind as well, that you always have that opportunity when you go back and watch the video for today and for this week, you will be able to just share that with us and ask us any questions and Tiffany can chime in whenever she is able to do that. So, you know, we really appreciate your time and your contributions and your comfort with us and sharing everything that you have been experiencing this past week, um, how important it is for us to be able to track these different things. It's so important to us and we really appreciate that very, very much. Um, if there are any questions about the oils, any questions about the wellness pipelines, any of those elements, please let us know. Let us know what we can do to help you, what you want to know about, um, what we can do to help serve you. That is what we are here to do for this 30 days. And I'm so grateful to you, Tiffany. Thank you so much for giving us some of your Sunday evening. And Colleen, thank you so much for all of the help that you have provided, adding enriching videos to us all week long, especially on your birthday and around the holiday. Um, and then not only that, but also sharing with us all the amazing data that you have put together. So we are gonna drop off, um, but if you have any questions after the fact, please just feel free to comment with us, uh, comment here below and in the chat and we'll be able to get to that and you can always watch this later. I do ask that you watch this within 48 hours though so that you can stay up to date with everything that we are talking about and doing. And we will see you soon and I believe Colleen is gonna be on live tomorrow as well to be sharing. So thank you guys again for everything that we have been able to accomplish and document for week one. And we are just gonna keep that rolling forward into week two. Um, and thank you guys so very much. And we will see you soon in the group. Thanks again. Thank you, Tiffany. Thank you all so much. Have a great evening.